this is just awesome. And the sun is out. I can't be happier. I just could not be happier. Well, good morning. I am just waking up here and trying to get my day started. Just made a little uh, breakfast sandwich with some egg and cheese, and I've got some, uh, oh, I forgot. I've got some parsley. I forgot to uh, put the most important part, some yellow bird hot sauce on here. Yeah, there, now it's done. Now I've made myself a sandwich. Anyway, um, I am in the little town of, well, the little city of Fortuna, and I came in here to stock up on groceries and to do laundry, and the drive up here kind of wiped me out, so been here a couple of days. I did stock up on groceries, but I haven't done my laundry yet today, and I would like to move on. Uh, nothing against Fortuna, nice little place, uh, lots of nice people around, but... Um, I would really prefer to be someplace else. So uh, I think today I need to get my laundry done so that I can move on. And uh, since that is why I stopped here, I should probably do my laundry before I leave. And then I want to find maybe a little place that's a little more uh, to my liking. Uh, again, nothing nothing uh, bad to say about Fortuna. I'm very happy to be here. I picked Fortuna because there is a grocery outlet, which is one of my favorite grocery stores, and also it had a really well-rated uh, laundromat here in town, so they uh, they got my vote. So I'm going to eat my breakfast and then we'll get a move on. You know, what's funny is I have a particular way of looking for a parking spot when I go to a new city. And I've been here to Fortuna before, but I wasn't exactly remembering where I was parking the last time I was here. And I, I was only here for a couple of days before. And I think I parked in the same spot each night when I was here last time. But anyway, the way that I look for a parking spot is I open up Google Maps and I just search around, and usually I look for apartment complexes, and so I did that the other night here, because the first night I got here in town, I parked right around the corner from Safeway, and it wasn't a great place to park. Um, don't know if I should tell that part of the story, but anyway, it wasn't a great place to park, and so the next night I figured I'm going to park someplace a little quieter, so I do my normal thing. I open up Google. I look for apartment complexes. I see one. And it was kind of over near Ray's grocery store, that kind of area of town, if you know Fortuna. So I drive over there. And as soon as I get to the exact spot that I had picked out, I realized that was the same spot that I parked in last time I was here in town. So I've learned something here. Apparently, in two years of time, what I look for and how I search for uh, a parking spot just hasn't changed much. So the spot last night was okay, but um, it was a little noisy. People are up and riding little mopeds and stuff around till about, I don't know, 1.30 or 2 in the morning. So I decided to look for another spot today. I think the spot's better, uh, the best one yet so far. It was really quiet here last night. Um, although I did have somebody bump into my van as he was walking his dog this morning, an older gentleman. And then he made a little swear. I don't know if his dog tripped him or what it was, but anyway, he didn't mean to hit the van, but he did anyway, which it was 8.30. I was already awake, but it was a little startling at first. But um, anyway, this spot is much better. The first spot in town I guess I will tell that story. Not so great. Uh, I was parked right near Safeway and 
everything seemed fine. The street was a little busy, you had people just blowing by the van, which is something I don't like to do. I normally like to park on a side street, but I was tired and I just really didn't care. So I get into bed and I'm in bed maybe half an hour and I'm just about to fall asleep and I hear what sounds like a domestic disturbance behind me. And I'm thinking, oh no, I'm gonna have to call the police and then I'm gonna have to like figure out like where am I exactly so that I can tell them where I am. Uh, maybe that shows up nowadays uh, when you call 911 on your phone, on a cell phone, I don't know, but uh, I was just thinking, you know, all the little things are running through my head. It was sounding really bad and they were right behind me. They were parked right behind me. I heard them when they pulled up and then I could hear some muffled sounds when they were going at it in the car and then they got out of the car and then that's when I could really hear them just screaming at each other. And I, I'm not sure which one was going to hurt the other one, but it sounded like they were both going to just take each other out. So just about the time I'm thinking I'm going to have to make a call, I start to realize this is just how they talk to each other. Just how they talk to each other and seem like a normal conversation. It just died down and then they just started talking normally and then they went inside. They lived right in the apartment building <laughs> there. I, uh, that was, a that was a bizarre experience. And I don't ever care to do that again. So I'm not parking in that spot anymore. Anyway, enough of that. I don't want to think about that anymore. Uh, I think it's now time to go find the laundromat. I think it's just a couple blocks away. Uh, my one issue here is it's a cool and dark day out today. I think it's only going to be a high of 62 degrees. Overcast, maybe some rain. This type of weather makes me just want to sit and do nothing. But I got to keep going because I've been here long enough. Uh, I need to get stuff done and move on. Well, I just went inside and checked it out. One of the things I've learned over the years is always just go in and look at it before you decide you're going to use a laundromat. Uh, there are two laundromats here in town, and this one is the better rated of the two, according to Google Maps. So that's what I'm kind of going by. Um, looks decent in there. Uh, some of the machines are out of order, so, you know, there's that. But um, there's plenty of room in there. It's not busy yet this morning. And change machine is out of order, but I think there's somebody in there that will give me change. So it looks good. Now I just need to uh, get all the stuff together. I'm going to strip my bed down. I'm kind of thinking it's probably time to wash my duvet cover. I really don't like dealing with the duvet cover, but it's probably time to uh, just handle it. I really don't mind doing laundry these days because I can always just come back to my space and sit in my own little home while the laundry is working away and I can do other things like enjoy my coffee or make a snack or something. Um, but my one little issue is I am a little bit chemical sensitive and so that means any kind of scents or perfumes really bother me. So just a couple of minutes that I was inside there getting the machine set up, I'm already feeling it. Like my throat is all already pretty raw, uh, my nose is runny, my eyes are really getting scratchy and that's just a couple of minutes of being around those heavy scents and I know not everybody is that way and people just think that I'm just crazy and you know I should just get over it but it's a problem you know um, but the nice thing is I don't have to sit in there um, but when it comes to scents in my own space I do really mind what I use and so years ago I found this Product. This is made by BioClean, the company called BioClean. This is a pretty small company, and unless you have a natural food store around, I think maybe Whole Foods carries these too. So maybe you know more traditional grocery stores might have this brand too. But um, it's a little bit hard to find. But I like this one because the scents in it are all natural. They're just essential oils, and those don't bother me at all. If it's a natural scent from nature. I don't have any issue with it, uh, but these kind of synthetic 
fragrances really bother me. Plus, it's super concentrated, so a little bit of it goes a long way. Uh, so it seems a little bit expensive if you're just looking at the price of it. I bought this at a Home Goods, and you probably can't read that anymore, but that's $8 I spent on this, which is like a little under half price of this normally. Uh, and I've been using this for several months now. Uh, I think almost a year actually and if, you know I'm only down to about there so for me it's cost effective especially because it's not going to give me any issues uh, the scents in it aren't going to give me any issues anyway uh, I need to get my bedding new bedding put on put these on while I'm waiting for the laundry uh, to work just so I'm doing something you know it's not that cool today and now that I'm moving around this down coat is really too much, but uh, I can't put my sweater on because it's in the laundry. So it's either be a little too warm or a little too cold. So I always pick being too warm if I have the option. But um, yeah, I kind of wished I had a second sweater, but I don't. It's kind of minimalist problem, isn't it? Okay, laundry's all done. Put away. I don't know why that always takes longer than I think it should, but anyway, I should plan for that accordingly. But I'm down to, I think it's been over a month since I've done laundry last. So that does kind of help, and uh, I guess maybe I just forget how the whole thing goes since it's so long in between laundry stops. And I'm feeling a little more comfortable because I've got my sweater on, which is a little more temperature appropriate. But, um, I was gonna say this uh, this duvet cover was definitely due to be washed. Uh, I used to have two and they were exactly the same. This is from Ikea and I bought it on sale and then I went back a few weeks later and it was still on sale so I bought another one. I like it because it's 100% cotton and it was nice when I had two of them because I could just swap it out when it got dirty and have, you know, a fresh one at the ready. Um, unfortunately, I was transporting some stuff and slid some big stuff in next to my, uh, next to my comforter here, and I ripped the other duvet that was just like this one, put a huge tear in it, and I was gonna try to sew it up, but it was just, it was such a jagged tear that I just ended up tossing it. So I'm just down to the one duvet. So I would like to get another one at some point, but I really only like to buy them at Ikea because it seems like they're just outrageously priced everywhere. And Ikea, when they go on sale, they're not too bad. I think this one was less than $20 on sale. It might have even been $15 on sale. I think that's why I did go back and buy the second one. But I'm nowhere near an Ikea, at least I don't think. Uh, there's not a lot of stores around these parts. And... Uh, that's okay, because that keeps me from spending money, right? Well, I don't know if you can tell, but I've been kind of holding my tongue a little bit here with the city of Fortuna. And not that I have anything against the city. Uh, it's a lovely town. Uh, lots of nice people around. And the fact is, I came here to get stuff done. I needed to get groceries, stocked up on groceries, and get laundry done. That has been done, so the city has fulfilled the purpose in why I came here. Uh, so all good there. But even when I'm running errands and doing chores, I like to spend a little time getting out into nature. I try to plan my day so that I get stuff done, but also get outside a little bit. And here's my little sticking point with the city of Fortuna. There are lots of places to go hiking and to see around the city here. So for instance, Fortuna is built along the Eel River. Unfortunately, close to the city here, there's just not a lot of access to get down to the river. Now, of course, I could drive a ways and get access to the river and enjoy it that way, but I was trying to stay in town and trying to not spend a lot of money on gas and, you know, by driving around. So, that didn't quite work, but I did find a little place to walk along the river and got to experience a little bit of the Eel River, uh, even though I couldn't get too close to it. So, okay, I figured since that didn't quite work out, I would go hiking up in the uh, Headwaters Forest Reserve, which is just a little bit northeast out of town. But when I went to go take a hike out at the reserve, I found out that you're not allowed to just hike by yourself. 
the only way you can gain access is to uh, sign up ahead of time and to go with a tour guide. Now there is another access point to the Headwater Forest Preserve and that is up and uh, outside of Eureka. So that's just a little bit north of here. But again, I didn't want to drive out of my way, spend gas. I kind of wanted to do things that were right in town. So I crossed off going to the Headwaters Forest Preserve just because it wasn't terribly convenient. So um, nice town, but there's not a lot of nature type things to do here in town. Now there are a couple of parks and they're very nice. I checked both of them out, spent a little time at both of them, uh, but they're really geared more towards people with family and kids. And so it's just not really my type of place. So um, since I haven't gotten out into nature here, where do you think we are headed now? Well, that is the casino, of course. Okay, I lied just a little bit. Uh, I did come here to the casino, but not to go to the casino. It's because I needed gas. So I uh, drove about two miles out of my way and saved almost 50 cents. So I think that's well worth it. I didn't really need gas necessarily, but uh, we are headed out to the Lost Coast. So probably a good time to fill up, make sure everything is taken care of, took the opportunity to dump my trash, use the restroom here. So we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to go to the Lost Coast. So this is Centerville Beach, and this is the very northern edge of what is called the Lost Coast. Now they call it the Lost Coast because it is a very rugged and very remote area. Uh, if you look at a map, you're not really going to see the name Lost Coast usually, uh, but you will notice that Route 1 juts way around away from the coast. And the reason is that this area is just so diverse, so inhospitable, and just so difficult to build on, they couldn't build a road along the coast there, and so uh, they just jutted over Route 1, and makes this area very difficult to uh, drive through and get through. Uh, the roads that do exist can be pretty treacherous and can be in pretty bad shape. Uh, this one that I'm on is actually pretty easy driving, although it's a pretty narrow and small road and it's not in the best of shape either. But this is such an incredible area and hopefully I can spend a little time here because uh, today being a little overcast, obviously it's not the best weather to uh, show off just how beautiful it is out here. I'm headed back to the van for a second because it's much cooler here and it's pretty windy. So this little sweater is not cutting it. I need to get a jacket. This is much better, much more comfortable. Would you look at that? Just a couple of minutes. We got a little blue sky. It's perfect here. Of course, it's still a little cloudy going that way, but I have hopes. We're gonna see a little more sun today.
this is a dream to be out here. This is just awesome. And the sun is out. I can't be happier. I just could not be happier. Uh, I was going to walk a little bit farther, but as you can probably tell, the tide is coming up. And if I go too far, I'll get pinched off and get stuck up here. This is not a place you want to take chances. It's pretty rugged out here. I'm not even sure if I have a cell signal uh, at the moment, but not that it would do you any good. There's nobody for miles around here to come and help you. So you do need to be careful out here, but uh, a little bit of caution and a little bit of prudence. And you can be in a whole nother world. For a second there, I wondered where I parked my van, but there it is, right between the two behemoths. Well, with the sun out, I don't need a down coat anymore. Switch back to the sweater. Actually, it's feeling pretty good. I don't think I need anything at all. We're back to t-shirt weather. Now, uh, lunch, right? Lunch. Let's see, I've got a little bit of ground beef left from dinner last night, so I think I'm going to make a quick little bit of soup. I had the smallest little bit of uh, hamburger meat left after making a hamburger last night. I sh probably should have made a big huge hamburger, but I just didn't want that much. So I'm using up the last of it just as some little filler for some soup. So I'm just browning off that little bit of leftover hamburger meat and then I'm going to be making some ramen and this isn't your average ramen. This you have to get at a health food store or a natural food store but it's not quite as uh, a nutritional wasteland as most ramens. It's you know it's not the best thing either but as long as you fortify it with a little bit of something else. Uh, I like this brand and uh, they go on sale quite often so when I see them on sale I'll just stock up by a few, throw them down in my pantry. Although uh, I do seem to uh, leave them down in the pantry for a long time and they do tend to get crushed but this one's still intact. It's all about the texture, right? Anyway, and then I'm going to add some vegetables to it. And if you know what I've been eating the last three or four, five or six months, or maybe a year, um, I've been surviving off of these frozen mix mixed vegetables. Why can I never say that? Frozen mixed vegetables. Okay. Um, these are handy. So I'm going to throw a healthy dose of these in there too. What a dream this is to be able to spend a little time in a place like this be able to cook my lunch and listen to such an incredible backdrop of sound. Uh, the view's not fantastic from right here. There's a little berm behind the van, but the sound, the sound. All right, there's lunch. Just a little quick ramen with some vegetables and some ground beef, and I almost forgot I had parsley, so I added a little bit of that too. Parsley is underrated. I had the idea of soup earlier when it was chillier. Now that it's warmer, I guess I could have had something else, but this is fine. Okay, so I did make some coffee, but I don't think I'm going to sit here and drink it because I'd rather be out walking around. So I'm just going to put the lid on this and it'll be here when I get back. Um, it is kind of getting late, so I would rather uh, spend my time out by the water versus uh, sitting in the van. So, And because I don't want to be holding this while I'm out there, I'm just going to leave this uh, behind. But uh, this 
cup that I use is uh, really great. It's a double walled insulated cup, so it doesn't hold as much as you might think. It's a little smaller on the inside than it looks. It does hold quite a bit though. It holds 16 ounces altogether. And that does me fine some days, but most days I just make about a 12 ounce cup of coffee. Um, but the great thing about it is that I can make coffee, put it aside, and have it nice and hot when I do come back uh, from whatever I'm doing, and uh, there it is. So that's what I'm going to do now. This is great. It's warmed up quite nicely. I don't even need a sweater. Still t-shirt weather. Got sun shining. This is fantastic. Look at what I just found. It's a little cave. Somebody must have carved this out over time. That would be somebody with a lot of skill or maybe just a lot of gumption. I'm not sure, but wow, this is cool. I don't think anybody's living in there. Should I claim it as my own? This could be my new home. It's just about perfect. I mean, it's about the same size as my van. I uh, can't stand up for all of those of you that uh, think that that's important, but, uh, you know, that hasn't bothered me for six plus years. So, yeah, this is my second home. This is my beach home. Today has been an absolute joy. Just been fantastic to be out here, but I really didn't get enough time since I got out here later in the day. So the plan, I think, is to just come back here tomorrow. And I can't stay here. Uh, for one, it's not a good idea uh, because the tide does roll up over the spot occasionally. So not a smart place to camp. Uh, but two, it's not really allowed out here either, although there isn't anybody around that's going to get after you for camping out here, but just not the best place to camp. So I'm going to go back into uh, the little town of Ferndale that we drove through to get here, and Ferndale's an awesome little town. Tonight I'm just going to go back there, find a place to park, and then I'll just head back out here tomorrow. It's only about a 10 or 15 minute drive, so not too far. Okay, so I found a parking spot right downtown uh, Ferndale here, and I'm just off of Main Street. Uh, I did take a little walk around, which is what I normally do when I'm in a town that's not familiar to me. So I walked around, and there's plenty of other really nice places to park, but this is a fine spot, so I'm just going to stay here. So I'm back in the van, obviously, to get dinner started. And I'm just going to cook up some potatoes. Part of these will be for dinner tonight, and then I'll use part of them for breakfast tomorrow. Okay, my dinner might seem a little strange, but this is two eggs, uh, some potato that I chopped up, and I've got some more potato for tomorrow. I'm just letting those cool. And on top is a half a pack of gravy mix. And then I just threw in some frozen peas out of my freezer into the gravy. So they defrosted while I made the gravy. And then I put over top of everything a nice healthy dose of uh, some parsley. It's a perfect addition to most anything. It just kind of livens up everything. Uh, so this is dinner. And I think I'm going to call this one quits. Um, I will eat my dinner in peace and run off to bed. I don't have far to run. Uh, hey, thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it.